Hello, welcome to our quick tutorial on how to configure your Perspective dashboard. As you know, Perspective provides unparalleled visibility into network performance, fault management, and device availability across any size of network. The Perspective dashboard, as you see here, with its iGoogle look and feel, is a network management dashboard with a summary display of key performance indicators like CPU load, network interface traffic, latency packet loss, log files, or any other type of data that you might be collecting on a device, quickly exposing trouble devices across areas of the network. The Perspective Dashboard is comprised of two key components. The first are Dashboard tabs, as you see here at the top, where you can create multiple tabs in your dashboard. The second are gadgets that actually get dropped on those Dashboard tabs. As you can see here, we have six gadgets indicated by the blue bar across the top. Out of the box, Perspective has three pre-configured dashboards for you. The first one is an overview tab that has a checklist on the left-hand side of key things that you need to do to configure your Perspective properly. The next tab is a top 10 of other key indicators like CPU, memory, high disk volume. And the third tab is actually Perspective status where the top gadget alerts and process highlights any alerts that have been triggered by Perspective but that have not been reset, thus they are still active. So now that we've done a quick overview of the dashboards, let's create a new one. The first thing that we'll do is hit Add Tab. And we'll give it a friendly name. Let's do one for Exchange Server. After we've added a tab, we can go up here to Add Gadget. Add Gadget is the location where we have an inventory of all the different gadgets you can put on a dashboard, basically any information that Perspective can collect. Um, as you can see in the tree view on the left-hand side, they're broken by categories. For example, device availability, device performance with associated categories, network performance, which is really about traffic, application performance with out-of-box support for Exchange SQL. There is wireless performance to monitor your wireless infrastructure. There's VM section to monitor your ESX servers and the associated virtual machines. And then finally, there's VoIP to monitor your entire VoIP infrastructure and how well that is performing. So since we're going to do an Exchange one, let's go up to Application Performance and let's select MS Exchange. Then what you're going to see is a gadget configuration window come up. Every gadget that you saw in that inventory has the same wizard-like feel to walk you through configuration. The first thing that you do is give um, a friendly name. So we're going to call it Corp Exchange server. Then we can decide the display mode of DNS or IP and then finally we can give it a target. So we'll select the exchange server from our inventory of devices in perspective. We select it oops, and hit OK. We move next. Now the second step of this gadget is configuring the counters and processes that's associated with the exchange server. Now this is for display purposes, so you can decide if you want to show everything or only select a couple key areas that you might be interested in. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and select everything and hit finish. And then what it does is instantly gather the data from the perspective database and put it into a gadget on your dashboard. So you can instantly see the application of Exchange. So there are other key areas of Exchange that we want to monitor. So let's hit Add Gadget again, and let's go up to CPU. And now let's take a CPU gauge. Take that, and we can give it a friendly name like CPU. The display mode again, DNS or IP address. And then the monitor scope. This actually allows you to change the resolution that will display in the gadget from the latest, most current data point all the way up to the last year. I'm going to go ahead and select latest because I want a real-time view. Then we'll select the target again of Exchange Server. Hit OK. And then there's threshold. So this allows you to configure a warning threshold that will turn the gadget yellow and a critical threshold that will turn the gadget red. So they'll give you an instant visibility into if the device is performing poorly. I'm going to go ahead and put the critical at 90% and hit finish. And then what you'll see here is a gauge, CPU gauge get dropped onto the dashboard 
with the current statistics associated with it. It looks like things are performing well. The next gauge I want to add is I'm going to add memory. So we'll do a memory gauge as well. So if same process, we can call it memory if we would like. Last hour, I'm going to do latest. Again, select the target very simply. Hit OK. Do my threshold. I'm going to do it at 90% again for critical and hit finish. And then what you'll see here is the memory gauge added and it looks like our memory is running pretty hot, which we know that that actually is OK. So you can continue to add gadgets to your dashboard in any fashion that you would like. There's also some additional configuration settings with your dashboard tab. The first thing is, is that you can drop down this arrow here and you can configure columns, allowing you to give multiple columns to the dashboard. So let's do three and hit OK. And then what you'll notice is a third column has been added. Now what we can do is actually drag and drop gadgets around on the dashboard to customize the view for us. The other thing that you can do is you can actually change the column width by dragging the bar, the column width bar in between the different gadgets to expose different things. And then finally, if you click the arrow down, you can actually clear gadgets, rename the tab or, at, or close the tab permanently if you so choose. So now that I've given you a sample overview of how to configure your dashboard, let me walk you through some samples that we've configured that might be beneficial to you. As you saw before, there's a top 10 list. One thing that um, we've done here is actually configured a dashboard tab for the traffic going across our core router. You have traffic analysis gadgets hits by broken down by top 10 applications, conversations over here on the right. If I scroll down to the bottom, the domains that people are going to, and then the endpoints that are actually generating that traffic. So I can instantly see who is creating traffic or what applications are creating traffic across the network. I've also created those type of tabs for our London office, um, actually collecting traffic from a switch using PT flow right here. So as you know, Perspective supports non-flow um, devices. And this is an example of that, bringing it into my Perspective dashboard. I've also done traffic for the New York office. I've created a tab for our virtual infrastructure. This is actually one of our key ESX servers. So I'm monitoring um, that server on my dashboard because I want to see it instantly and then the associated virtual machines. I've created a tab for our VoIP infrastructure um, so I can quickly identify if call quality has dropped and people are, might having trouble using the system. As you can see, there are no active calls going on and over the weekend there wasn't much call history. But you can see here that the call path looks pretty steady and um, the infrastructure is running very well. Finally, I've created a wireless tab for our wireless infrastructure. It looks pretty light, but I can do different charts associated with the access point, traffic, and then the number of clients connected. If I scroll down, I see a weekly chart. As you can see, it spikes during the day and, and drops during the night. If you're used to MRTG traffic analysis um, type of charts, um, for network interfaces, you can actually see something very similar in your perspective system. Um, so you can do it, your hour chart, your daily chart, your weekly chart, across any type of device and any type of interface. Now, the other thing that is probably the most important thing with your perspective dashboard is the ability to not only for you, but to share it with your other um, colleagues. What you would do is you would click Web Studio here at the top. When you click Web Studio, it logs you into, it takes you to a secure login to, to view your perspective dashboard in any common browser. So I would enter my username credentials and whoever you send this to, you would just create a user in the system and allow them to log in. Just send them the URL up here that, you, that is really the IP address of your perspective server colon 5054. And I hit login. Now what you'll see here is that are actually all my dashboards in a browser view. So I can, you know, see these from anywhere that I might be from home. Um, if I'm traveling, I can actually see it on my BlackBerry as well. I can log in. So all the different charts look the same. We click the MRTG chart. You'll see the same type of graphs um, that you saw within the studio. If I look at traffic, see them in a nice, easy to use, friendly chart form. That allows you to get your dashboard um, up and running and configured properly for you for your use. Thanks a lot.